I'm, I'm Chandrika Chandrasekhar, one of the medical oncologists at University of Iowa, specializing in GI oncology and neuroendocrine tumors. I'm going to briefly discuss uh, the topic about um, the treatment options and uh, sequencing for NETS and where does the PRRT fit in. So in the beginning, probably treatment options were very limited. When you walked in as a patient in the 1930s, you, the doctor probably asked what you had. I don't even know what you have. And now fast forward to the current scenario where you have so many options. And this has been rendered possible by the approvals of multiple drugs over the years, starting from initially chemotherapy and interferons to multiple targeted therapies, some of analogs, and more recently PRRT, and hopefully more in the future. With this comes a big toolbox, which is a good thing to have as a patient. The small bowel neuroendocrine tumors, uh, patients with uh, that small bowel neuroendocrine tumors may have all these treatment options in their toolkit, versus pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, they have a few more treatment options, including everolimus, sunitinib, and uh, chemotherapy. With this comes the question of treatment sequencing. And the uh, first question to ask is, what is the data, or is there any data for sequencing? And unfortunately, at this time, there's no good randomized controlled data to answer this question. Now, um, when you choose a therapy, question to ask is what's our goal and what do you expect or what is the efficacy of the therapy, which we do have answers to. Side effects of therapy, you know, or does choosing one option close the door for something else in the future? And I think based on the therapies available, we also have a good idea about your side effects and what to expect. And then most important, what is the goal of the therapy in need of the hour so as to speak as a patient? If somebody is very symptomatic, do they need something like cytal reduction with surgery rather than um, a PRRT upfront approach or a chemotherapy if it's a pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor? If it's just a little bit of disease progression, maybe we can cruise along with the targeted therapy like a verlumis or sunitinib. However, we got to remember the toxicity from these side effects. In that case, you always choose PRRT as a better option, not known at this point. So important as patients to know all these options up front, because I think as a patient, you can advocate for yourself based on your individual situation, not just look at the day to day, but also down the lane for many years in the future. So what is first and what is next? Like I said, no randomized clinical trial is available and the old trials had either placebo as an arm or other therapies that are not maybe used like interferons as frequently. So randomized clinical trials with active modern treatments are needed and some are ongoing. Until then, and likely always in the future, every patient will need an individualized approach and no standard algorithm. Unfortunately, also there are not very perfect uh, predictive markers to help us choose this is the best next therapy as well. So it's a shared decision-making practice. And in that decision-making, we need to consider tumor factors like grade and differentiation or the stage of the tumor or the tumor burden, the effect of the tumor burden on the patient, whether also the tumor is secreting hormones, making the patient symptomatic and also the patient factors, like if you have pre-existing kidney dysfunction, could PRT even be an option in the future or now? And we have to talk about disparities as well or access to clinical trials and therapies. Back in the day when PRT was not approved in the country, patients who only had access to go to Europe could get the PRT therapy, whereas the others who couldn't did not get it until recently. So what is PRT in this uh, brief slide here is a you know, very potent mechanism or, uh, for targeting uh, the tumor specifically using octreotide um, linked to a linker molecule called Dota, Tate, or TOC, or in, uh, well, switch out the, instead of the gallium in the picture here, lutetium or yttrium or some other therapy um, instrument like alpha therapy with lead or bismuth potentially in the future. And that's basically PRRT. Now the NETR1 trial, which is uh, something that most patients are and clinicians know about is the first randomized clinical trial that led to the approval looking though only in small bowel neuroendocrine tumors either a higher dose of octreotide therapy or PRRT. Now, this is a very interesting pivotal trial, I would say, because if you look at the kaplan meier curves, which is what we refer to on the figure A here, is a progression-free survival with a large benefit between the patients who got PRRT versus the higher dose of octreotide. There's a 79% risk of reduction of progression or death that was noted. Now, the question also to ask about side effects or what to expect in terms of e efficacy. If you notice the objective response rate, meaning the actual shrinkage of the tumor is only 17%, and this is for small bowel neuroendocrine tumors. So the majority still mostly has stable disease. So if a patient is very symptomatic with a lot of syndrome, is this the best next option is a question. Also to note, patients who went on to this trial had also received a lot of prior therapies here. So the question of sequencing was not answered, is not well answered still by this trial. What's also important, though, is the uh, quality of life reported. You know, do we get a benefit by doing PRT first, at least in terms of quality of life? And this is interesting because the time to deterioration of quality of life 
especially the two measures that are important, uh, global functioning or global health quality of life and diarrhea, another common symptom, patients who got PRRT, they had uh, the time to deterioration was much later when they got PRRT upfront versus getting upfront meaning after uh, the standard dose of somatostatin. Now, does it work well in pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor? This is a brief slide summarizing many studies, no prospective randomized controlled trials, but it's thought that even um, there may be even be a higher response rate in pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. There are also studies looking at the functional component or aspects of neuro pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors like gastrin secretion or insulin with uh, evidence for a robust response with PRRT. When does it not work well? This is important because if before you consider a therapy, is this the right therapy for you? If a tumor has a very high KI-67, this may not be the best option. Chemotherapy is probably the best option in those patients. In this context, NETR2 clinical trial, which is ongoing, is very important, which is looking at the role of PRRT in grade two, grade three, advanced pancreatic uh, slash uh, small bowel or uh, neuroendocrine tumors. Also looking at these patients uh, when they were relatively recently diagnosed, within six months of diagnosis, so kind of upfront therapy as well as in a higher grade tumor with a KI-67 10 to 55%. Before choosing therapy, like I said, we have to look at toxicity. Everybody is aware of the 3% risk, 2 to 3% risk of leukemia or myelodysplastic syndrome, meaning like a bone marrow disorder um, later from a PRRT. This is also a risk to remember, uh, although to a much lesser degree with temozolomide, one of the agents used in pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. So also I wanna bring attention to the persistent hematological dysfunction, which is basically low blood counts that persist beyond six months. So not maybe frank uh, leukemia or myelodysplastic syndrome, but just low platelet count. And that's been described as high as about 4% or 5% after receiving PRRT in these two large series. Kidney toxicity, I think we've talked much about it. It's relatively safe in patients um, um, with the normal kidney function. However, the safety in patients who have some pre-existing kidney dysfunction, um, I think that's something that's being looked into. Should we do differently with dosimetry guidance? Is it even safe? Should we be more cautious? Should we choose a different option in these patients? Sequencing, coming to the question, what is on? what are the ongoing trials? I think everybody is looking forward to the COMPE trial, which is ongoing, which is looking at a different type of PRRT, lutetium etotriotide versus everolimus in patients with progressive uh, receptor positive gap nets. But have to note here, they are excluding patients who got radio embolization. And this is important, patients who have yttrium-based embolization, could that increase toxicity with PRRT? Now there are data, there's data um, that you know, supports both notions. There have been series that have shown pr uh, prior PRRT followed by embolization being safe and also being unsafe. So I think that's an important point to consider as well. The other uh, trial that's ongoing, uh, SICTAR, which is estimated to complete in 2021, is looking at chemotherapy and um, upfront versus uh, another option um, or the reverse sequence with everolimus in uh, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors which one to choose between a targeted therapy and um, chemotherapy. And then directly comparing sunitinib, uh, a small phase to study in pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors to lutetium PRRT. Now, there are no trials that I am aware of going, going with a liver embolization in this picture or surgery in this picture, but one has to remember it's um, liver embolization only works as a liver dominant disease and surgery may not be an option for a lot of patients and surgery by itself has a lot of controversy whether there's improvement in survival or not. What is the uh, existing data published? Uh, these are some interesting studies published in the recent two year, past two years. A large Italian multicenter group looked at um, 131 patients from a larger cohort of uh, 1,182 patients, and they identified four main themes or sequences. The median PFS, meaning the progression fee survival, it did not matter uh, statistically, at least at this point, between the four sequences, whether you went from somatostatin analogs to a higher dose of somatostatin, or to everolimus, chemotherapy, or PRRT, like those listed. However, uh, patients who went from a somatostatin to a higher um, analog uh, dose or to PRRT seem to have lesser toxicity, which is not surprising as patients who have gotten everolimus or chemotherapy probably can relate to. So while interpreting this data, you have to remember it's retrospective, but very small numbers, so it's hard to make any conclusions. And uh, both small ball and pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors were included, so there's a heterogeneous population there. And is it possible patients who had higher rate of disease progression were anyway offered those other therapies like chemotherapy, bringing in an intrinsic bias in this interpretation? 
So then another series recently reported a large study from Swiss uh, Neuroendocrine Tumor Database. 167 sequences were identified. That just drives home the point of how complex tumor sequencing is. Uh, if you have 167 potential thought combinations that you can identify. But one theme was if patients had small bowel grade one neuroendocrine tumors, most often PRRT was used over other systemic therapies first as the next line of therapy after octreotide analogs versus pancreatic and lung neuroendocrine PRRT seemed to be at least in practice a later option being used. This is another large series from Bob's group. A thousand patients that had received any PRRT. On this right side here, you have the purple was patient of who had received multiple, more than three lines of prior therapy, that they seem to have shorter progression-free survival when they receive PRRT. However, when a multivariate analysis was done, basically including other factors like grade um, and other therapies and other factors of the tumor, this was not statistically significant. So hard to make conclusion. In my mind, a simple algorithm may look like this. If you have a small bowel patient has a small bowel neuroendocrine tumor, is it liver dominant or there's a lot of disease outside the liver? This does not include the functional component in it, whether the patient has symptoms from it, hormone secretion from it, but also always ask the question in this situation, probably surgery an option for effective cytoreduction, meaning bringing down the disease burden. If the liver is a critical organ, should we be considering if surgery is not an option, embolization as a next step potentially to save the liver? Most patients do get some of the statin analogs as a first step, especially if there's not much of surgery or embolization or there's a lot of extra hepatic disease. The logical next step at this point, I think most clinicians would favor PRRT over Everlumis as the next option. However, remember to revisit this uh, algorithm whenever there is a change in your disease because some of these options can be used more than once possibly. And um, in this situation, for me, small bowel neuroendocrine tumors, I would put PRRT before the available targeted therapy, uh, Everlumis, mostly in terms of toxicity as well as the robust data available for efficacy and progression-free survival. However, in pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor, it gets very complex because there are more options available and probably um, uh, lesser data and more complexities in terms of how the tumors respond to different treatment options. So one option could be surgery. If that's an option, again, this is a little controversial depending on uh, the series because it's retrospective data, followed by some of the analogs, targeted therapy if their disease is slowly progressing, and then should we go chemo next or PRRT, maybe PRRT if it's a slow progression. However, it's probably also possible to switch up this order to go chemo followed by PRRT, which was what probably was being done in the past when PRRT was not available. But like I said, the reverse sequence may also be an option to think about. In a certain patient who has a lot of disease burden, very symptomatic, I would probably still choose chemotherapy if it's a pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor because the response rates are probably the highest at this point um, with up to even 50 to 70 percent with the cape cytobine temozolomide in patients with pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor but then maybe PRRT could be the next logical step for those patients or maybe targeted therapy or something else. Well, should we move PRRT even up front? And I think there's in pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, there's a little, little bit more hesitation with this sequence. Well, we don't have data to suggest or support it or to oppose it, I would say. Summary, at this point, patient and tumor characteristics are your best guidance sequencing therapy until we have these randomized clinical trials answering those questions. So clinical trial participation is very, very valuable. Thanks to the neuroendocrine patient community for advocating for these trials and participating and continuing to um, help us know about neuroendocrine tumors and manage them better every day in every way. Thank you.